Today we make meatball parmesan sliders better than any restaurant you've been to. You'll start out with some butter or brioche rolls and cut those in half. Spread some ricotta on the bottom layer of the bread. Then we're going to cover in meatballs and if you'd like to save some time, you can use store-bought or you can make it from scratch. You can cook the meatballs in the marinara or just pour it on top along with some fresh basil, some grated parmesan, and then add your cheese. The next time I make this, I'm going to use some shredded mozzarella and provolone. Now for the best part, we're going to make our garlic and herb butter and spread that all over the top of the buns. Our last step is to pop it in the oven to bake at 350 Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. Sprinkle some more parm on top and enjoy! Hey everyone, it's Ariana, and today you and I are making these homemade gyoza dumplings. I'm definitely not a pro, but trust me, these are so fun to make and so delicious. For your filling, start with a pound of ground pork and then add a cup of sliced green onions, half a cup of chopped shiitake mushrooms, two tablespoons of minced ginger, soy sauce, salt, pepper, and two cups of shredded green cabbage. Give this a mix and you're ready to assemble the dumplings. Start by adding a tiny bit of that filling to the middle of your wrapper and then add a little bit of water and start to crimp the sides. If you don't want to do the little pleats like this, you can also just fold it into a half moon shape. <laughs> it does take a little while to get the hang of it and then add them to a hot pan with some oil and fry the bottoms till they're crispy. Then pour in about a fourth of a cup of water, add your lid, and let let them steam for about three minutes till the water's evaporated. And that's it, eat them plain or with your favorite dipping sauce. Check out the full recipe on my Instagram where I'm replying to all my followers' comments and let me know what I should try to make next. Okay, this might actually be the perfect Mongolian beef recipe. It's so tender but perfectly crisp glazing that delicious sauce. Cut your steak into quarter inch strips, then marinate for 30 minutes. The secret here is your baking soda, which is gonna tenderize your meat while the cornstarch is gonna give it a super crispy texture. Next, pre-make your sauce by tiny whisking together some soy sauce, chicken stock, and brown sugar. Then prep your aromatics along with some optional but recommended dried red chilies. Dust your marinated beef in some cornstarch, then shallow fry in neutral oil for 2-3 minutes or until it looks like this. Then place it in a bowl to rest and remove most of the oil, leaving a few tablespoons in your pan. Fry your chilies and ginger and cook for 30 seconds, followed by your garlic and then your sauce. Add in a cornstarch slurry to thicken up your sauce, then finally add your spring onions and beef and stir fry for another minute and you're done. This was so delicious, I hope you enjoyed. guys what you call this and it made me realize how many cultures have this delicious flaky flatbread. I ended up making it with some cilantro and garlic butter and oh my god you guys have to try it. It gave it this beautiful crispy exterior and soft interior. You can find the written recipe on my Instagram. The dough is made with just flour, hot water, a pinch of salt, and half a teaspoon of baking powder. After you make the dough, let it rest for a few minutes and then form them into equal sized small balls. You should have enough to make about four. I roll each ball out into a really thin rectangle, spread my garlic butter mixture on top, and then roll it into a log kind of like you would with cinnamon rolls. Then you're going to want to stretch out the log and form it into a spiral. This is going to give you lots and lots of layers and it's going to make it really flaky. Let it sit for five minutes and then roll it out into a circle, brush some more garlic butter on top, and then cook it with about a tablespoon of oil on a hot pan. Look how delicious that looks. You can make this creamy mac and cheese in about 15 minutes and using only three ingredients. Start by adding six ounces of elbow macaroni to a pot, then pouring in just enough water to cover it. Turn the heat to high and bring up to a boil, stirring frequently. Once most of the water has been absorbed by the pasta and it's nearly completely cooked, pour in six ounces of evaporated milk, then bring back to a boil. Next, add your cheese, reduce the heat to low, and stir constantly until the cheese has melted and a smooth, creamy sauce has formed. You can now season with salt and pepper or any other seasonings you like and serve immediately. Did you know if you mix some flour and natural yogurt, cook it in oil until brown, add some sugar, you get mini donuts? Let's make these potato cheese pancakes. One potato, peel the skin, chop into even pieces, salt your water, boil until soft, add your sugar and cornstarch, give this a mix, roll this into a ball, flatten it, add mozzarella cheese, close it up, roll it into a ball again, and flatten it. Add a thin layer of oil. You asked, we delivered. Today on Just a Trend or Do It Again, we're making the TikTok ramen. Start by cooking your ramen noodles until al dente. Then in a skillet, add butter, minced garlic, and soy sauce. Add in a tablespoon of brown sugar and as many red pepper flakes as you'd like. Then let the sauce get thick and add in your noodles. 
Add your egg and then let that cook and combine everything once more on top of sesame seeds. We finished it off with some more sesame seeds and scallions. This was very, very tasty. Plus, it came together in under 10 minutes and it's the perfect base for other additions like veggies or other proteins. We would 100% do this again. show you guys how i make my crispy chicken burgers because they're pretty good i start with the marinade and i didn't have any buttermilk this time so i just used some milk with a little bit of lemon here i'm using chicken breasts and i let them marinate for a few hours for the flour mix honestly just use as much spices as you can it makes such a difference in the flavor and then here i'm showing how i make my spicy mayo it's super easy and it tastes amazing when it comes to coating the chicken i like to mix some of the wet mixture in the dry so that it gives it a really flaky crust and of course, if you want it to be extra thick and crispy, you want to double dip or even triple dip. Leave it to rest for a few minutes and that way the coat won't separate when you're frying and then it should look something like this. And then you can go ahead and build the burger with anything you like and that's basically it. If you're ever going to make one of my recipes, let it be this one. I've been making this chili for 10 years and everyone who tries it falls in love. In a pot, heat some olive oil, then add diced onion, jalapeno, minced garlic, then saute until softened and add some tomato paste and toast for a few minutes. Add ground beef and break it up, then season with these listed spices written on the screen and mix it in as you continue to break it up. Season with salt to taste, then add some tomato sauce, crushed tomato, and diced tomato. Mix it in, then add in two cups of chicken broth and three types of beans. Now cover and let it boil on medium heat for 10 minutes, then uncover and add two more cups of chicken broth and some salt to taste, then let it come to a boil, then simmer on low heat for 30 minutes. Top with your favorite toppings, and I love to serve it with some cornbread. Enjoy! Honestly, if a dish has both butter and heavy cream in it, it can't go wrong, so let's make the creamiest butter chicken in under 30 minutes. First thing you're gonna do is cube your chicken breast and marinate it in yogurt and all your spices for at least an hour. Then we cook it over high heat to get some beautiful browning on it. Cook down your tomato paste to remove some of the acidity, then add tomato sauce, heavy cream, and butter and whisk all together. Add your chicken back in, mix it, taste, and adjust to your liking. Top it off with cilantro and some more yogurt and enjoy! Oof, I cannot wait to put you on these air fried chicken and cheese taquitos. You'll need cooked chicken, cream cheese, garlic, shredded cheese, these listed spices written on the screen, and some Oaxaca cheese if you have. Now wrap some corn tortillas in a paper towel and microwave for about one minute until they're soft and pliable, then stuff with the chicken and roll them up tightly. Usually these are shallow fried so you can do that, but I sprayed with some cooking spray and air fried till they were perfectly golden like so. Then top with Mexican sour cream, salsa verde, cotilla cheese, cilantro, and that is all. Enjoy! The other day, somebody left me a comment asking why my recipes are so unhealthy if I studied nutrition. The answer is pretty simple. Eating yummy food makes me happy. And honestly, seeing how 2020 has been going, I don't know how much time we have left. I'm really not trying to make this year any worse by eating rabbit food, and you shouldn't either, so come to Food TikTok and we'll cook all these delicious dishes together. Let's make Olive Garden's Fettuccine Alfredo. Melt 3 tablespoons of butter and add 1 tablespoon of minced garlic. Then add 1.5 tablespoons of flour and mix until combined. Add your milk and heavy cream and bring that to a simmer until it thickens. Add some salt and pepper and then slowly start adding in your fresh grated Parmesan cheese. Once it melts, it's going to look like this and now I'm adding in my cooked fettuccine and then topping it off with some parsley and enjoy! Hi, my name is Miriam and I'm addicted to carbs. Here we have some buffalo chicken calzones some Korean cream cheese garlic bread. You guys don't understand how happy it made me. It came out so good. I made some milk bread just for Oikawa, twisted pretzels with homemade cheese sauce, as well as these heavenly fluffy butter rolls. They were so delicious. Starting to realize I make way too much bread, but we're not done yet. Here's some homemade pita bread, copycat onion, sour cream and onion pretzels, some perfect dinner rolls, copycat onion, cinnamon sugar pretzel bites, as well as some normal pretzel bites with cheese sauce. I made homemade Raising Cane's Texas Toast. 
the perfect garlic knots. All of you guys went crazy over this recipe. I made the Texas Roadhouse rolls, but 10 times better. And of course, we can't forget about Olive Garden's breadsticks. Some cream cheese and jam danishes. Garlic butter naan, as well as a savory pulled apart bread. And that's not even all the bread recipes that I posted on my page, but there's definitely a lot more coming. This week for celebrity recipes, we are making maybe the most popular celebrity recipe ever. We're doing Gigi Hadid's spicy pasta. This recipe has taken over the internet and I feel like people attribute any kind of spicy vodka pasta to Gigi even though she just made this one. But it's a very good one, so let's do it. Also, when Gigi posted this on her Instagram, she did not add vodka in hers, I think because she was pregnant. I am not pregnant, but I don't drink, so I did not have any vodka on hand. So I followed her Instagram story recipe exactly and did not add vodka. Okay, I'm actually going to be quiet right now so you can hear how good this sounds. That sound is music to my ears. Friends, this pasta is so good and I now understand the hype. So if you haven't made this pasta, please, please go make it. It's, it'll, it'll probably change your life. Hey everyone, it's Ariana, and this is some of the most mind-blowing chicken you'll ever eat. It's called Takanjon, and it's this sweet and crispy Korean fried chicken that's unlike anything I've ever had before. The chicken is perfectly crunchy on the outside and covered in an amazing spicy sweet sticky sauce. Start by covering four cube chicken breasts with a cup of buttermilk, and then season with some salt, white pepper, and garlic powder. Give that a stir and then pop it into the fridge to marinate for an hour overnight. Then to your bowl, add one and a half cups of flour, plus your baking powder, dried thyme, chili flakes, paprika, salt, and pepper. This is gonna be the crispy coating for the outside of our chicken, so add your chicken in there and stir it around and then fry your chicken in hot oil for a couple minutes on each side till they're nice and golden I fry the chicken in batches so it cooks evenly and doesn't overcrowd the pan Finally for our sauce, we're gonna simmer soy sauce, ginger, garlic, sesame oil, brown sugar, honey, and gochujang Which is this insanely delicious spicy Korean fermented chili paste And then simmer for five minutes and coat the chicken Then top with a sprinkle of toasted sesame, red pepper flakes, and sliced scallions Let me know which dishes you'd like to see next Check out the full recipe on my Instagram and follow for more food from around the world